Hello everyone, today I would like to talk about three very important women who have forever changed the medical industry, even to this day. Their names are Rebecca Lee Crumpler, Elizabeth Blackwell, and Margaret Sanger. In this video, I would like to take the time to celebrate and honor these wonderful women who have dedicated their lives to helping others in the form of medicine. The first woman who I would like to talk about is Elizabeth Blackwell, who is arguably the most well-known out of these three influential women for her outstanding medical efforts during the Civil War. Blackwell's first experience that swayed her to the path of medicine was when a dying friend of hers said that her treatment would have been much better if she had a female physician, since male physicians would often be trained as apprentices for more experienced doctors. However, this was easier said than done for Blackwell, since there were few medical colleges and none of them accepted women. Blackwell would later be rejected from most colleges she applied to, but was eventually enrolled in Geneva College in New York. Her acceptance letter was intended as a practical joke. Blackwell would face immense discrimination and would be seen as a bad person for defying her quote-unquote gender role. Nevertheless, she continued her training at London and Paris hospitals and would emphasize preventative care and hygiene, realizing that many doctors often caused epidemics by failing to wash their hands and maintain proper hygiene. In 1851, Blackwell would arrive in New York City once again, where discrimination against female physicians endured, which would mean fewer patients and more difficulties in practicing in hospitals and clinics. However, with the help of a few Quaker friends, Blackwell was able to open a small clinic that treated poor women, and in 1857, Elizabeth Blackwell opened the New York Infirmary for women and children, along with her sister and fellow colleague. This infirmary was mainly built to provide opportunities for women physicians. During the Civil War, the Blackwell sisters trained nurses who would treat soldiers in fighting for the Union. In 1868, Blackwell would go on to open a medical college in New York City, in which she would later let her sister take charge and would permanently return to London to become a professor of gynecology at the new London School of Medicine for Women. She also helped find the National Health Society and published several books, including an autobiography named Pioneer Work in Opening the Medical Profession to Women, which was written in 1895. With all of these accomplishments in mind, it is safe to say that Elizabeth Blackwell really is the epitome of perseverance to satisfy one's passion, as well as dedicating oneself for the well-being of others. The second woman who I'd like to talk about in this video is Margaret Sanger, who was the founder of the term birth control and is an international leader in this field. Sanger was another doctor that was born into a large family of 11 children, with Margaret being the sixth child that was conceived. She attended Claverack College and then took nurses training at the White Plains Hospital and the Manhattan Eye and Ear Clinic. When working as an obstetrical nurse, she would often witness the relation of poverty, uncontrolled fertility, high rates of infant and maternal mortality, coupled with the deaths that resulted from illegal botched abortion. She would dedicate herself to breaking barriers and publicizing the reality of contraception in 1912, while publishing articles in the process, including the paper What Every Girl Should Know for the media company The New York Call. As she continued to speak out on behalf of the many women who had suffered through these issues, she would unfortunately receive backlash, which can be seen when she was charged for mailing materials that supported the cause of birth control. However, these charges would be repealed in 1916. Subsequently, Sanger opened the first birth control center in all of America, but once again, she would be arrested for being quote-unquote a public nuisance. During her time in jail, she would publish another book titled, The Birth Control. Her struggles and efforts began to gain traction at around this time, and as a result, support for birth control increased in popularity. This led to the court to grant physicians the right to give advice on the birth control procedure. In 1936, the Comstock Act of 1873, which had classified contraceptive literature 
and materials as obscene at the time was modified to allow physicians to import and prescribe contraceptives. Sanger would also find the American Birth Control League in 1921 and would serve as its president until 1928. This was the parent organization of the Birth Control Federation of America, with Sanger assuming the position of an honorary chairman. Sanger also organized the first World Population Conference in Geneva, Switzerland in 1927, and was the first president of the International Planned Parenthood Federation, founded in 1953. Apart from being a significant part in many different organizations in this field, Sanger has also dedicated her time to spreading her campaign across the world, mainly in Asia, where she would make an appearance in both India and Japan. Margaret Sanger is also known for teaming up with W.E.B. Dubois for the Negro Project, where she and Dubois would bring the concept of birth control to the African American community. However, even this would cause misery for Sanger, as she would be accused of being racist for this effort. In response to this, Sanger would say it's imperative for African American parents to have choices in their parenthood and be able to control how many kids they would want as well as other factors. With all of this being said, Sanger is yet another amazing and groundbreaking figure in the medical industry and really is a prime example of breaking barriers and suffering through many tribulations for the welfare of others. The third and final woman I'd like to talk about is Rebecca Lee Crumpler. Crumpler is the only woman in this video that is from African American descent, which makes her story all the more inspiring, since at the time, not only would she be discriminated against for her gender, but also for her race. Growing up as an aunt in Pennsylvania, Crumpler would spend a significant amount of time caring for sick neighbors, which has fostered her passion for the field of medicine. She would then move to Charlestown, Massachusetts to work as a nurse. She did not need much formal training for this profession, which made the process of applying much easier. However, Crumpler was subsequently enrolled in the New England Female College, which allowed her to become the first African-American woman in the United States to get an MD degree in 1864 and was the only African-American woman that has ever graduated from New England's Female Medical College. She has collaborated with the Freedmen's Bureau to help care for freedmen as the war finished. These freedmen would have minimal access to proper medical care, coupled with the fact that freedmen were also discriminated against by white doctors. This would lead an ample number of African Americans to pursue the medical field and follow the footsteps of Rebecca Lee Crumpler. Crumpler would continue to practice medicine in Boston in the late 1860s, as well as help sick patients, often for free, which highlights Crumpler's true passion for helping others rather than making money. Rebecca Lee Crumpler truly helped reform against the prejudice that prevented African Americans from pursuing high quality careers. Although these three women are important in their own ways, there are many other women who have contributed in different aspects of life and yet did not receive the respect and honor they deserve, and we may never know their names. This is how these three women, and perhaps many more, have changed the medical industry and other industries around the world, due solely on the fact that they are passionate about their jobs and truly love to help others.